Hello, so, my uh, brother. Yeah. Please, by all means. <laughs> Go ahead, Agai. Well, greetings to you know our brothers and sisters out there. Uh, those of you who have a love for our Heavenly Father, the Most High, whose uh, one and true name is Yahuwah. And those of you who continue to stand strong and have faith in the belief in his eternal son, the Messiah, the one who came down through the virgin birth and died for our sins, to be an example of, please God, my father, my king, be an example of how to live right and follow the commandments as passed down from generation to generation, whose true name is Yahushua. We greet you all in their love and peace through their precious um, spirit. And please allow me not to be nervous, not like you. I just hope you all are doing well. Uh, and I sincerely mean that. I hope that every single day, waking up in the morning and you're giving thanks to our Heavenly Father and His Son, and you're able to appreciate life and the life that's inside of us and that was given to us, which is not of our own, and really get a chance to meditate on everything. As we continue to go on this path and journey um, together, and some of us on our own, it still becomes a question of who do we want to be and why do we want to be that person? There's always um, different temptations and perhaps maybe doubts in our hearts with different things that may be going on, whether it's um, temptations from the enemy or uh, frustrations of um, things going on within our home in the belief system and the different sectarianism that's going on uh, right now. But I pray that you all are continuing to stand strong and willing to endure the walk that is required by our Father and our King to their precious spirit. As we have been led to come together um, for their teaching and not of our own authority and power, but of theirs to get on the topic on continuing on one doctrine, one ministry. And today's teaching from my Father and our King through their precious spirit is going to be on Psalms 110. As they lead and guide us, um, I'm just so excited because, you know, Akiai, what's interesting is that um, as been, we've been uh, they've been preparing us is that we don't need to defend them. <laughs> we don't, they don't, they don't need any defense. It's, it's the almighty, right? I mean, like what, yes, <laughs> what can I physically do myself, you know, that he can't do on his own with like a snap of a finger, but um but as they've granted us permission to do so because of the humility and the willingness to be humble 
and be a vessel and um, not negate the fact that the arguments are being made out there, right? So, now, um, from what we've been learning and studying, um, can you briefly discuss uh, what you believe the arguments are when it comes to Psalms 110 and the struggles that uh, those from the side of not believing that the Messiah had come already, and then those who believe that the Messiah has uh, come through the virgin birth? Yes, sir. Uh, I believe that our issue, collectively speaking, is to where the battles of interpretation you have where many of those who are on the side of uh, our master, Master Yahushua of Nazareth, we see with his interpretation, we see that this points to him as he claimed. However, on the opposing side, you have different, uh, as we will examine, as our father can give us permission, you have different interpretations as well, where you have those who um, they say that this is uh, David, that it's being spoken about, or Dawya. And then you have some people who basically will say, no, well, uh, this is referring to uh, our ancestor Abraham. Uh, so some people, they, what they'll say is that Psalms 110, which we know it as today as Psalms 110, they'll say that that was not, that particular one was not written by King David or King Darya. What they'll say is that this was um, pretty much uh, one of his uh, peers that actually wrote about him. Uh, so there's different interpretations there. And again, there's those that even have a interpretation or a midrashim that this is referring to our ancestor Abraham. So, which is very interesting. So, uh, but there's this battle of interpretation and uh, it results into misunderstandings. But what we today, family, we're trusting our Father and our King to be able to walk us through these nuances humbly, to be able to actually look at the text, not just in English, but even look at it to where those of you who are familiar with it from the original language, you'll be able to see these things and let our Father and our King guide us into the solid conclusion. So that's just a brief, uh, as far as I can from what our Father and King's had me to see on, on my end, as far as there's different interpretations that we all have to be willing to be humble and recognize as well as there's controversies pertaining to these things. This subject that we're, as a father can give us permission to talk about is a very controversial. So we have to be mature students uh, of the word and to be able to just walk through as well as you, my family who are out there, uh, just for us to all be able to be uh, unified in this particular, as far as belief and understanding of Psalms 110. Absolutely, uh, well said. And I agree when it comes to the battle of interpretations, because you have those of the, um, for lack of better terms, the Jewish side, where, um, and, you know, we've discussed how there's different sort of um, sects within the Jews, right? Those who uh, are unorthodox, orthodox, those of rabbinical, but the, you know, the belief system in which uh, the Messiah the man that, uh, that has talked about in history as far as claiming he was the Messiah, and the son of the Almighty, how they, um, please have my problem, my king. They make the argument and um, about the New Testament and the um, discrepancies for, you know, uh, as they state, of the text being uh, manipulated or, um, change and different things of that sort. Uh, but then at the same time, uh, refusing to open their eyes and their minds to the Old Testament and the different things that have been uh, done to the text um, in order to prove certain points and beliefs, you know, which is interesting. So uh, it goes to show that there's, there's always a side to each story, right? those who believe in the Messiah and then those who, who do not. And um, we have to be able to open up everything 
listen to all arguments with yes, an open mind, not with um, not with a paradigm state of mind. Because if we go into it in a paradigm state, then we're just looking to prove one argument instead of looking at all arguments. Yes, sir. And letting our father and our king bring us to that conclusion. Yes, That's what it's about. Um, it's the same arguments, Akiai, what they say about scribal, scribal errors. And um, well, the Masoretic text is also an eclectic text. You had Ben Asher and Ben Neftali. And so the complete, uh, as far as the complete copy of our Bible, many of the base texts comes from, as far as the Masoretic text, we do have the Aleppo Codex, but mainly as far as the complete uh, copy, as far as the standardized text goes back to the 10th century from the Masoretes. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting how when people critique the New Testament, they're ready to go, they're right on board, Akai, when it comes to these dates. But when we look at, um, even though we have the Dead Sea Scrolls, which is which validates the scriptures, but there's still variances as well. Um, but as far as the Masoretic text, that eclectic text from, as far as the Masoretic family, the mm -hmm. Ben Asher family and the Ben Naphtali family, you're looking at as far as the oldest complete copy, it goes to the 10th century. So are we saying that there's older manuscripts of the New Testament than there are of the Old Testament? That's a, that's a very good point that you've just made. You do have the Aleppo, those of you who are students, you do have the Aleppo Codex, which goes a little earlier, probably about the mid ninth century. Um, but even with the Dead Sea Scrolls, which is very important because it shows uh, in the early BC, towards the end of the BC times, it shows that it validates as far as what was in the Masoretic text. But a lot of people uh, do not understand that that text is a standardized text. So do we negate or throw away the Masoretic text? Absolutely not. Uh, these men uh, actually standardize it. They basically, uh, those of you who know where they put the the uh, vowels in it as well. But the question that no one has really seemed to ask, the rhetorical question is, did the Mezarites themselves accept Master Yahushua as the Messiah? This is what a lot of people really have not really come to terms with that question. The, the Mezarites coming around the ninth century, as far as them doing their work around the eighth, ninth, and 10th century, when the text was standardized, the question is, the, these particular rabbinic scribes, did they except Master Yahushua of Nazareth as Messiah, or did they not? So that's something that I, Fanaki has to just be able to let all of us, including, you know, the family, those of you who are watching, take those things under, under heart, you know, in consideration. Sure. Great. So without further ado, as I Heavenly Father and his son has granted us permission to move forward with not our teaching, but their teaching, on one doctrine, one ministry, Psalms 110. Yes, right. sir. So for those so, of you family who have your scriptures, can you please turn with us to the book of Psalms, Telahim, and let's go to Psalms 110. And let's all of us, those of you who have your notes, take notes, just sit back, relax, let our Father King just guide us into this wonderful journey, this wonderful study together. Uh, Akia, you, would you like to read or would you like me to read? Um, you can actually read if you'd okay, like. Yes sir. yes, sir. Okay, family. So again, Psalms 110 and commencing at verse 1. Akia, uh, real quick yes, for, the, for the people, um, yes, which version are you, will you be reading from? I actually have multiple versions. As I, and for those, when we really begin to dissect the text, family, uh, we'll be able to share the screen and show you guys, but um, I actually have the NASB that I'm going to read from now, but I also have the Stone Edition to Knock, and um, okay, which one will you be reading from? Um, I have my New King James version out, and I also have my uh, complete Jewish uh, study Bible out as well, with okay. insights for the Jews and Christians, for those of you who may be interested in you know, adding this to your library for edification purposes. Yes, sir. 
And family, this is what it's about. It's about actually looking at the scriptures. Uh, people refer to themselves as Torah scholars. Well, for those of you who are really study, you know, you're not going to just sit there and just study it from one aspect. You're going to let our Father King just guide you and, uh, you know, with his precious spirit and to be able to really look at these things in this full manner. So um, for those of you, we're going to, again, Psalms 110, starting at verse one. And it says here, verse, verse one says, the master Yahuwah says to my master, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. The master Yahuwah will stretch forth your strong scepter from Zion saying rule in the midst of your enemies. Your people will volunteer freely in the day of your power in holy array from the womb of the dawn, your youth are to you as the dew. The master Yahuwah has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever, according to the order of, it says Melchizedek or Melchizedek. The master is at your right hand. He will shatter kings in the day of his wrath. He will judge among the nations. He will fill them with corpses. He will shatter the chief men over a broad country. He will drink from the brook by the wayside. Therefore, he will lift up his head. That's Hallelujah. powerful reading. Hallelujah. That's a powerful reading, my family. And we was interesting, and I you, as you, you know, just to share your thoughts as you're led, just want to say this, and I'm just going to digress quickly. What we just read to you, these seven verses, what's very powerful about this is that there's many different interpretations. But what's very interesting is when you look up at the beginning of Psalms 110, you'll see it says a Psalm of David. And so this is where it gets really intriguing to be able to just wrestle with the different nuances. So Akiai, uh, what's your thoughts, sir? Uh, no, you're right. Um, same thing. Um, you know, it was interesting how at the top of the heading, it says a Psalm of David, but yet um, different versions or different arguments is, is that um, I believe they say that it was a Psalm to David. Um, so, uh, and, you know, we, we see how it starts where it says, I deny, right? Or my master says to my Lord or my master, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. So it goes to show that there's two individuals there, right? And we see the high power and authority, right? And then the commandment of, hey, sit here while I deal with this, right? So, um, yes, and then you can see the, the prophetic verbiage, right? Uh, within the song. So, you know, just very interesting. Yes, sir. Really, if you think about it, it's not an issue, uh, and family, for those of you out there who are studying with us, it's not an issue when you look at verse one and it says the Lord, Master Yahoo in all caps. A lot of people on, on the, the very, as far as the very side, different sides, they won't argue and say that that's talking about the Father. Master Yahuwah. The issue comes in is where you, you see the, where it says Lord and it's the capital L, lowercase O-R-D, Adonai, or actually Adoni in the Mesoretic text. So uh, this is the issue that people have a discrepancy over. Uh, some say that this is, uh, is speaking of, we're saying it's speaking of the Messiah. A lot of people may not concur with that. Some people will say, no, this is talking about uh, David, and then you even have those who say this is referring to Abraham. So it's a, it's, a, it's a lot of different things going on here. And so there's not really a, a issue when it comes to the father being expressed. Right. The issue is, is that, well, who is the father speaking to when he says, uh, he gives his commandment as you specified, mm -hmm. sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet or your footstool. So Correct. That's interesting. So, so the question now lies is, did David 
write Psalms 110, right? Because did you hear that, you hear that my family? Can you repeat that one more time? Because see, a lot of people did. Did, did David write Psalms 110? Now, Powerful. personally, I believe that's important because when it says a Psalm of David, it means David is writing this, right? And he's saying, Adonai, right, or Master Yahuwah says to my master, right, yes, sir. sit at my right hand. So which master is David or Dawiyat referring to, right? Because this is the argument, right, that um, the Messiah, Yahushua, is not in the, in the law, the writings, and the prophets, right, or in the Psalms. He's not in there, right? Um, as far as the Messiah who actually came down through the virgin birth and, you know, um, and was the living example amongst, you know, the disciples and in the anointed faith. Yes, sir. So a lot of you out there may say, well, no, 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 he didn't write it. This was someone write it about David. You know, a lot of people may have that particular view. But um, what I want to share, Akiai, is, and for those of you out there, I'm sure those of you who um, may be familiar with the Stone Edition tonight, what's interesting is there's a, this is how, I'm going to read verse one, and this is how it reads. It says, regarding David, a song, the word of Hashem to my master, wait at my right until I make your enemies a stool for your feet. And the Hebrew word there is where it says regarding David, as it's translated in English, that Hebrew expression, for those of you who have the Mesoretic text, you can look at that, is le David meets more. So what's powerful as I show it, my family, in the stone edition, it says regarding David. And here's the, you know, as far as the Hebrew there for your expression. Now there's a footnote there for those of you who saw that little asterisk right by where it said right in between David and it says a psalm. And I'm gonna read you this so we all can be edified. It says here in Psalms 110 verse one, this is the commentary, what it specified. It says in unnamed psalmist, possibly one of David's soldiers composed this psalm about his king. Now that's expressed by Ibn Ezra and also by Radak. So Akiai, and again, this is not to uh, speak evil of these men. This is just as a father king through honest scholarship as he guides my brother and I, is to be able to share with you all as far as the interpretation. So we have Ibn Ezra as well as Radak who actually uh, saw this as not as David, but some soldier, a soldier, an unnamed, an unnamed psalmist that was talking about David. And so there's many they, people out there that, I'm sorry. I'm go sorry. Go ahead. No, I'm my bad. No, I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, that's okay. I just was going to say quickly. There's many of you all out there who agree with that particular interpretation. Go ahead, Akira. What was your thoughts? Right. Uh, I, I guess what I found interesting uh, about that as far as their belief in the marginal notes of, you know, uh, the stone edition uh, Tanakh is that I've heard arguments that uh, Luke didn't write the book of Luke, right? And there's no record of it. And it doesn't <laughs> say I, Luke wrote it. But yet these individuals are saying, we don't know who wrote it it had to be maybe one of his soldiers. So now when you say that, that's purely speculation. Why? Because it doesn't say it in the text. So Correct. I could sit here and make the argument, well, that has to be a false Psalms 110 because nobody knows who wrote it, right? If it wasn't David, who was it? And how do you prove it? Yes, sir. Good question. 
And we're going to go on a journey, but I just want to show, as I finally can lead, to just show another source in the Stone Edition to not, to just for us to learn, okay, you and myself, as well as those of you out there in my family, and those of you who may hold to that particular view. You saw when I was led to hold it up to the screen, you seen how it's, it was, the Hebrew expression was le David, this, that's how it's enunciated in the Masoretic tradition, le David mitzmo. Now, you all saw with your eyes how it was translated as regard, regarding David, okay? Now, for those of you who have the stone edition, just quickly flip just one page in Psalms 109, the same expression, le dawi mitzmore, and this is how it's translated in English. Psalms 109, I tell you, the conductor, it says, yeah, it says for the conductor by David, a song. So, so it's indicating that it's a song by David. Yes, sir. And there's the Hebrew expression there. Now, yep. what's interesting, Akei, thank you for my time. See, this is what you call, as far as I can have you be a detective of the word. So what's interesting, my family, is that you see the same Hebrew expression, le Dawid mitzmore. But the translators did not translate, and this is not to defame them or to speak evil of them. This is just showing and beg to, as far as the questioning of why was it not being consistently translated as regarding David. But now all of a sudden we see here it's by David. What's your thoughts on that, Ajay? It's interesting. So it, it how I see is that they're not being consistent with the translation. It's as if they apply a translation to accommodate it the way they want it to be accommodated or the way they want it to be applied. Yes, sir, which is very interesting because again, it shows how by the English, not really looking at the Hebrew, it can show how Someone will say, they'll be very adamant and say, David or Dawiyad, he wrote Psalms 109. So the question that we should ask rhetorically, if he wrote 109 and it has the same expression, then why in Psalms 110, there's this issue that we don't know who wrote as far as Psalms 110? Same expression, but yet in English, it's translated differently, and that can shift the paradigm to where now we're viewing Psalms 110 in a whole different light. Exactly. Okay. So in, in, in retrospect, what we're saying is, is that, please God, my father, my king, when you have individuals, right, and uh, or the doctrine of the belief that... Um, the New Testament and the writings in there are false and that's not the true Messiah. And they try to prove that argument by going to the Old Testament and they will go to certain chapters and books and verses to prove the argument that, look, from the Old Testament, what they're saying in the New Testament is incorrect. That's what's occurring. All right, the Messiah that came through the virgin birth that we have in our Bibles and we've grown up to believe, right? I know the doctrine of, you know, Jesus, uh, uh, you know, Yahweh Shai, uh, you know, Yahushua. Um, and now you're dealing with the, the different Christian churches and then now you're dealing with Christianity. Now you're getting into deeper things when it comes to you know, what's the true Christian faith, right? Um, and then the the different doctrines that are thrown out there when it comes to uh, our King, the Messiah. So you have these individuals and these, uh, in the, you know, people who call themselves uh, rabbis or uh, those in the secular world or uh, those uh, involved in sectarianism or with affinity within themselves, how, the argument is, no, the New Testament is false. Let's prove it from the Old Testament. 
But then when we go to the Old Testament, to the verses and chapters that they're referring to, where they say, look, the Messiah is not here. Those are not being translated consistently and correctly throughout different chapters of the Old Testament. You understand? Yes, sir. And, and this is why it's very important. And um, for those of you, um, as you're led, Let's go. Uh, okay, can I share my screen quickly? Just uh, yes, please. No, uh, share your screen. I, I think um, as I follow King Lee, I would love to see examples of that same Hebrew phrase, right? Yes, sir. Translated into English, indicating it is a Psalm of David, and then seeing how it looks from Psalms 110 and how it is translated differently. Yes, sir. So let's go, my family. This is going to be a wonderful time here. Thank you, Father King. So let's go, as a Father King uh, lead, we're going to look at something interesting. So as we were here at Psalms 110, and this is in the, I have the JPS version here, and it says here, Psalms 110, it says, of David, a song. And here's the expression in my family. You can see that me and my brother, we have it here highlighted for you all so you can see it. And it's Le Dawid meets more. Neum Yahuwah Le Adoni. So this here, where we highlight it again, this is showing the discrepancy here. I have it highlighted in English as well so you all can see that. And so what people are saying is, is that this here is not in this particular chapter, they're saying that this is not David writing this. Le Dawid meets more is basically saying, of course, I showed you as a Father King led us to show you in the stone edition, it says regarding David. Uniquely though, in this particular Tanakh version, the JPS 1985, it literally just says of David, a song. Now, What's powerful here is that let's go to Psalms, as I showed you in the stone edition tonight, let's just go to Psalms 109, just quickly. And here it says, for the leader of David, a song. And it says, O God, O Almighty of my praise, do not keep aloof. And here's the same expression here. So the same Hebrew expression, hmm. Of course, at the beginning, it says for the leader, le, le me nekzach, le, le me nekzach, le Dawid meets more. So the same expression, my family, that's pertaining to David, it's right here. For those people who are very adamant with Psalms 110, all you have to do is flip back to Psalms 109. Thank you, my father, my king. And when you look at this expression, why is this expression pertaining to David, but all of a sudden Psalms 110 is just miraculously someone else who's unnamed, unknown, who's talking about our ancestor, Dawia or David. So now let's look at another uh, example. Let's go to Psalms 101. And we see here, it says, us, of David, a psalm, I will sing of faithfulness and justice. I will chant a hymn to you, O Master Yahweh. So here it says, now this expression is again, Le Dali meets more. So the question, the oh, thank you, Father. The, the rhetorical question, fam. Now, see, I find Akeem, he's raising up detectives. He's not having his children play around. So now, the question, the rhetorical question is, did David, did he not write psalms? 109 and, and 101 too? Did somebody else write that too? According to uh, their logic, no. <laughs> I mean, what, what's going on here, Akei? Okay? It, 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 it's, it, it's, it's very interesting, isn't it? It's problematic, but yet I find my king. This is how I find my king doing this. This is not me and my brother here trying to show off and be arrogant. I find my king is exposing this. And a lot of people who say that they're Hebrew experts will go back and look at your Tanakh. And look at this expression, and then you come to the conclusion and ask yourself, is, did David not write this as well? 
I tell you, you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, you can't have it one way and not the other way. You know, you can't be dogmatic. You can't say, you can't use that argument, right? But then when it gets thrown back at you, not accept it, okay? You can't have it both ways, <laughs> all right? Yes, I agree. I agree, my, I agree, my brother. And my family, I know you all agree out there. Let's look at another one. Let's go to Psalms 84. And it says here, for the leader on the on a getith of the Korahites, a song. Now, what's interesting here, it says the same preposition that, that uh, Lamed there, Levani or Levani Korah meets more. So the question is, for the argument, it, is it some mystery psalmist that's writing about this, or is it exactly what the Hebrew as well as the English expressing that this psalm, this particular one, was written by the Korahites? See, there was more authors than just David. See this, my brothers and sisters? So here we have another example of the preposition, lebeni, korach, meets more. See this, my brothers and sisters? One more, if I find a king to seal it and establish this answer, his answer, as we're all learning to the rhetorical question that was asked earlier. Psalms 82, and this says here, at verse one, a psalm of Asaph. God or the Almighty stands in the divine assembly among the divine beings, he pronounces judgment. And here we have, now of course the word order is a little different, but we have meets more, le esaph. There's the preposition that lament there. So the question is, did some just unnamed psalmist wrote Instead of Asaph, did somebody else write this psalm? Or is this psalm exactly what the English is rendering as well as the Hebrew is expressing meets more le Esaph, that this was written by Esaph, one of our ancestors, this particular psalm here. So, Akai, what, what do you have to say about that, brother? Let me go back to Psalms Interesting. 18. Interesting. So the Lamed, if you can highlight the Lamed, okay, is... Yes. The key, because in all the different examples we've seen, that right there means it can mean two, right? Yes, but sir. how it's being translated, it can also mean of. Yes, sir. Depending on the context. Yes, sir. You're absolutely correct. Right. Which is interesting because um, even in the English language, there's different words can depending on the context, could mean different things, right? Yes, sir. So it's, it's interesting. So thank you for sharing that. Thank you, Father King. And now my family, as our Father King still have um, uh, my brother as well as myself to just investigate some things, that way things can be on a balanced scale. And let's uh, just quickly, let me sh just share this with you here. Let's go to... Can you see that, Akia? Yes, sir, I can. This is, uh, many of you who are familiar with the Safari, very good. good I actually website. cannot see the Safari. So uh, maybe, okay. um, yeah, stop, stop sharing. sharing and then, you know, share the yes. screen for the Safari. Okay, thank you, sir. Do you all see that now? You see it, Akia? Yes, sir. Okay, this is a very good uh, website as far as just, as far as an online library pertaining to the, you know, as far as the Jewish library is concerned and just a, a very good website here. So we're here at the same, uh, as far as the same chapter, we're at Psalms 110. And for those of you, we have the Hebrew here and it has Le David meets more. So we're dealing with this here, as you all can see this here. So now what's interesting is as I click, it says here, this is the JPS as well, same version that's here. Now, when I click on it, it has some commentary here. So I'm gonna click on Nedarim and let's see what it says. This is Nedarim uh, 32B and seven. And I, can, I, I don't know, can you see that? Can you read that brother? Or you want me to yes. read it? Yes, uh, I can read it. As it is stated, and he blessed him and said, blessed be Abram of God, the almighty, most high, maker of heaven and earth, 
and bless be God, the Most High. And it's referencing Genesis chapter 14, verses 19 through 20. Abraham said to him, and does one place the blessing of the servant before the blessing of his master? You should have blessed God first. Immediately, the Holy One, blessed be he, gave the priesthood to Abraham. As it is stated, the Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. <laughs> Psalms 110 verse 1. And afterward, it is written, the Lord has sworn and will not repent. You shall be a priest forever because you are a king of righteousness. Uh, yeah. You know. Rati, Marki, Zadak. Yes, sir. And in Psalms uh, 110 and 4, which is explained homiletically to mean due to the, to the improper words, the variety of Makat Zadak, the offspring of Abraham shall be priests of God forever. So that's showing interpretation as far as Abraham is concerned. My family, as I find a king lead, you see how we see here in this particular source here, Nedarim 32b7, and those of you can look it up for your, you know, learning. We see a reference from Bereshit or Genesis as it has here. And notice how it's correlating that with Psalms 110. Now, another thing that's interesting is let's look at commentaries. And those of you as you led, you can look at it as a far king lead. But let's look at what Rashi said here. And Adyai, can you please read what it says here, sir? Yes, the word of the Lord to my master, our rabbis, interpreted it, interpreted it as referring to Abraham, our father. And I shall explain it according to their words. And this is the Midrashim Psalms 110. Verse one, the word of the Lord to Abraham, whom the world called my master, as it is written in Genesis 23 and six, hearken to us, my master. That's powerful. <laughs> so so let, me, let me stop sharing as I'm led. So my family, what this shows, and for those of you as you led to journey and, and to be able to just look more into the matter as a father king will have us with this, this particular instance to just really reflect on is that we have seen, and we're gonna go in history as, at, our, at our other ancestors as well. So we see a balanced scale. We're seeing the different interpretations. You see, my brothers and sisters. So, so far examining Psalms 110, we've seen how some have uh, basically said that this was an unnamed psalmist Possibly, so that meaning they're not sure, possibly one of David's soldiers composed this song. But then now we see a reference um, that this is pertaining to Abraham. So it's a very interesting and very unique uh, how this is basically come forth to, for all of us to see. And again, it's not to uh, basically demonize our ancestors, but to be able to show the fact that just like today, Psalms 110 is a very, very... Um, as far as it's an issue, it's very, it can be very controversial. But I find the king has already just let us come to this solid conclusion that, again, based on the evidence and based on what we've seen, did David write Psalms 110? I got you. Yes, he did. As they say in Hebrew, 10. <laughs> so, my brothers and sisters, now let's continue to really go on this journey and, uh, we're going to go to the New Testament now. I mean, now for those of you who, who don't really want to go on a journey, well, if, if you want to move on, that's your particular choice. For those of you, my family, who love Master Yahushua, we've already taken the time now to look at other interpretations now. So now we're going to just go and just really uh, look at the matter and just look at the full matter and let's just continue to learn. So for those of you who have your scriptures, thank you, Baba King. Who you are. For those of you who have your scriptures, let's go to the gospel of Matthew and let's turn to the 22nd chapter, please. So Matthew, Matthew 22, and we're going to be 
starting at verse 41. And oh, can you let me know when you're ready? Uh, yes, sir. Um, okay. Go ahead, Akai. All right. So, family, again, I'm waiting for you, brother. You just let me know when you're okay. ready. Yep. So family, we're going to Matthew. We're going to look first for the whole matter. So, we're going to Matthew 20, the 22nd chapter, and we're going to start at verse 41. Akai, you want me to read or you would like to read, sir? Uh, yeah, go ahead and read. Okay, yes, sir. It says here, it says, now while, now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Yahushua asked them a question, saying, what do you think about the Messiah? It has Chris, meaning the anointed. He says, what do you think about the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David or the son of Dabia. He said to them, then how does David or Dawiyah in the spirit call him master, saying, the master Yahuwah said to my master, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies beneath your feet. If Dawiyah then calls him master, how is he his son? And no one was able to answer him a word, nor did anyone dare from that day on to ask him another question. <laughs> I tell you, what do you have? Now look now, now we don't look at other rabbis. Now we go into our rabbi. Now some people may not subscribe to him, but those of us who, those of you who love our master and I tell you that we love him. So brother, what is your thoughts on what our rabbi has said? And as far as how he interpreted Psalms 110. Um, well, I'll say this, that according to what's written, um, he asked them a question and he wanted to know their understanding and their interpretation of it, right? Yes, sir. And then he allowed them to answer. And then he posed another question for them to answer, which they refused to answer because there was no rebuttal to it. That's powerful. Yeah, it is. Yeah, my family. And see, look at our master. Look how, so you see, master, he wasn't condescending, like how these people are trying to be condescending towards him. Our master, did, he dealt with the people as he was led by his father. But understand what he's doing here. Understand his interpretation. See, Master Yahushua knew about Psalms 110 as we know it. He understood that. And notice the rhetorical question. Notice the question that he asked this particular one. So as I'm led, and as my brother's here, we're here, we're going to ask you the same question. We're going to ask you here, verse 42, same question that our master said. What do you think about the Messiah? Whose son is he? We're, we're just going to echo that same question. Now, I don't know, I got you, we don't know if they're going to say the same thing that, that these particular Pharisees uh, how they responded, but apparently, think about what our master said here. So now let's echo, I'm going to echo the same thing he said here in verse 45. If Dawiyah then calls him master, how is he his son? So that is on you for those who, now it's different for those of you who struggle, but for those who are going against Master Yahushua, that's for you to answer. But our Father King has already proven, as we was led, my brother and I, to go back and look in the Tanakh and look in the Psalms, as far as Psalms 110, 109, Psalms 101, 84, and 82, and we're seeing the expressions, and we're seeing that consistently as far as that these were not only Dawiyah, but others as our ancestor Asif, as well as the Korahites, they wrote those particular Psalms. So notice now how Master Yahushua was dealing with his audience and he's dealing with them about Psalms 110. Apparently, they had the wrong interpretation. For Master Yahushua would then question mm -hmm. them and they'd be put to silence. Yes, Thank sir. You, Thank you, my father, my king. Yeah, and ahead, uh, no, just for historical uh, purposes, um, scholars say that 
uh, the book of Matthew was written around the middle of the first century AD. Okay. Uh, Not only that, it states that despite the critical claim that Matthew originally wrote the gospel in Aramaic, this contention has never been proved. Um, It goes on to say that, uh, let's see here, when it comes to the authorship, it says that this gospel was incontestably written by the Apostle Matthew, whose original name was Levi, or Levi. He was a Jew whose father's name was Aphias. As he was a tax collector under the Romans of Capernaum and thus hated the public uh, publican, it is unthinkable that his name would have been attached to the first gospel had he not been the actual writer of it. Moreover, 17 independent witnesses of the first four centuries attest to its genuineness. So, uh, yes, powerful. So what they had you to ask a rhetorical question or actually an actual question in the previous teaching that they gave you where um, if anybody has issues with any of the gospels or any of the books in the New Testament, what are your sources of individuals during the first century stating Matthew did not write the gospel of Matthew? What other, what other rabbis, because there was, there was many rabbis in the first century as well as the second century. In the third century, our father kings blessed us with those particular sources. Not just those on the anointed faith, but even rabbinical sources. And the problem is, is that people are not honestly taking the words of the ancestors of the anointed faith and even the words of those of our ancestors on the rabbinical side and actually trying to come to a true understanding. Right. And for people to say, well, Matthew, how can Matthew have wrote the gospel when it speaks of Matthew in the third person? Well, again, as our father king had you to beautifully expound, Akiai, when we go into the Torah, and we look at the book of Shemut, we have instances where that is written about Masha, our ancestor, in the third person. So are we going to sit here and say that Masha did not write Shemut? We believe that Masha wrote it. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So the same arguments that people, you know, try to come up with, again, these things can be applied to the Tanakh, the Torah. You see this, my brothers and sisters. But it takes the precious spirit and maturity of our father, our king, to be able to deal with this matter as he sees fit. So, uh, Akia, do you have any other uh, expounding or any? No? No, bro. Family? I we have, do not. <laughs> we love our rabbi, Master Yahushua. You know, I remember one time I was, uh, when I went to see my grandmother, uh, Akia, a long time ago, and I remember uh, a, particular family, a particular family member said to me, who is your rabbi? And I looked at him, and not disrespectfully, but I looked at him and I said, Master Yahushua of Nazareth. He said, who? I said, Master Yahushua of Nazareth. And for those of you who love our king, if anybody up there asks you and say, well, who your rabbi? Lift up the name of Master Yahushua the Messiah. (laughs) So uh, we're going to go ahead to the Gospel of Luke. Let's go to our other ancestor who wrote the Gospel. The Gospel of Luke. Let's go to Luca chapter 20. Thank you, Master, for who you are. Yes. Uh, and uh, good history on Luke, it says here, and I'm reading from my uh, Unger's Bible Dictionary. Yes, um, it mentions that uh, patristic testimony regarding both the authors and the order of the several Gospels is conclusive. Matthew wrote at Jerusalem before starting out the evangelized the nations. Mark wrote at Rome before starting out to establish the faith in Egypt. Luke wrote in Greece or while sharing Paul's imprisonment at Caesarea. Uh, John wrote at Ephesus after his exile at Patmos. Clement of Alexandria of 150 AD affirms that Matthew continued his stay at Jerusalem with other apostles. So it just goes to show that there's still, I like how individuals say, um, there's no record of Luke or Mark or Matthew writing the Gospels, but then there's historical records stating that there is, and then we're reading some of those sources. So Absolutely. again, if there's any Jews from the first and second century who were there 
And is there's any resources or evidence stating or any citations of them saying, oh, these individuals did not write the gospels, the Messiah was not, did not resurrect, any of that stuff, please, by all means, share it. If not, humbly digress and walk away. Thank you, my father, my king. And what's so powerful is that people uh, were showing you sources of believers. Uh, Matthew was a Yahudi. It's mm -hmm. interesting how people say that the New Testament uh, is anti, as they would say, anti-Jewish or things like that. Uh, but yet the master himself came as a Jew, a, Yah a Yah Yahudi. He told Nicodemus, or not the man, he said the salvation, uh, actually, I'm sorry, he told, told Jew. He told the uh, Samaritan woman, thank you, Master, for your correction. He mm -hmm. said that salvation was of the Jew, the Yahudi. The 12, yes, apostles, the 12 apostles, those were Jews. You see this? So people mm -hmm. try to make these, these little funny arguments that are laughable. But again, family, let's go to our ancestor, Luca, and let's see what he record. He's going to record a similar, the same, the same uh, as far as what's proclam proclaimed here. So let's go to Luke chapter 20, and let's go to verse 39. Mm -hmm. Okay, I you want to read? Or yeah, I'll go ahead and read. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Then some of the scribes answered and said, teacher, you have spoken well. But after that day, they did not question him anymore. And he said to them, how can they say that Christ, or the anointed one, is the son of David or Dawiyah. Now, David himself said in the book of Psalms. So now he's quoting from the book of Psalms saying, David said it. Thank you, Mom. Oh, my God. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Father Key. Oh, man. Uh, so if you have any sources proof otherwise and not interpretation but actual <laughs> <laughs> father like, king please guys golly. golly it's just how do you make an argument and not have any proof you know like <laughs> and, and what's interesting is that like i was reading the book of joshua right yes, but then um I was uh, studying on the authorship and it was saying that nobody knows who wrote the book of Joshua. So I thought to myself, well, if, if Luke didn't write Luke, didn't write Mark, Matthew didn't write Matthew, right? All these different arguments. Then should I say who wrote the book of Joshua and then discredit that, right? But then at the same time, the one thing that is so simple that it seems that we forget is that we also go by faith. Exactly. Right? Because exactly. that's what a lot of individuals are arguing, right? They have faith, even though they're, even though when it comes to the first five books, Moses didn't say, and I will begin to write of the creation of, of man. And in the beginning, I, you know, it, that didn't start that way. Exactly. It didn't say, I, uh, Masha, am writing this, right? When it came to the book of Exodus, right? Or <laughs> Shamaut. He didn't write about his birth and say, and then when I was a baby, they was trying to kill me. And my mom was like, they ain't killing my baby. Let me put you in a basket. And I'm going to put you in a river. So you can be saved. And then I was captured, right, by the daughter or whatever, and they raised me <laughs> all the knowledge of, of, of Egypt. It wasn't written like that. You can easily say Moses didn't write <laughs> Exodus. Wow. You can't make one argument. You can't expect others to make the same argument in your beliefs. It, it just, it doesn't, it's so ridiculous. It's that's just, true. it's, it's, that's why it's funny to me, you know, it's kind of like, it's like, what's interesting is that if we were to have these sort of arguments with kids, like, oh, hey, can't say a bad word, but 
you said a bad word, so why can't I say it, right? Mm -hmm. They will question that. But then at the same time, it's like, we just, I wish we could just um, humble ourselves and really take a step back and look at things in a full open-minded perspective instead of from a paradigm sort of state. Does that make sense? Yes, sir, you know? it does. And I'm like they're just look, yeah, they're just looking at it from their belief. And I'm sorry, yes. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, no. I was just I was saying he has he I'm thankful that he has us actually looking at both sides. Yes, sir. Absolutely. And that's yeah. the important thing, right? Yes, sir. You're gonna make an argument and a claim that Nasi Yahushua was not of the virgin birth, right? Why would he, you know, be born of a virgin? Well, great. Now you explain to me and defend the fact that Adam was born of the dust of the ground with no man and no woman procreating through sexual intercourse. You proved that to me aside from faith. So virgin birth can happen, although had to go through living inside the womb, right? And had to be born out of the woman naturally, right? Yes, okay. sir. As far as the natural process of it, of the fetus growing, right? Yes, but sir. Adam didn't go through that process and nor did Eve. So if you want to make an argument about the virgin birth, please, by all means, make a great argument, right? And if our Heavenly Father is truly with you, then you'll be able to go into the Old Testament and prove why we should believe that Adam and Eve was born by a heavenly father through the dust of the ground and also from the rib of Adam. I believe, I have faith, and it says it here, my scripture, I have faith and believe that's what it says. And I also believe through throughout everything I've read that miracles that he's done, right? Yes, that sir. they're true. So now, please, individuals out there who don't believe in the Messiah, you don't believe in the virgin birth, deal with the other arguments as well. Deal with the miraculous birth of Adam and Eve, right? And if it's just by faith, great. Guess what? Don't argue against those who believe in the Messiah about their faith. If we have faith that Messiah is the son of the almighty and he is the eternal one, then let it be so, right? Yes, if you don't believe that, great. You know what? Teach the Old Testament. Teach us how to live right, how to love our neighbor as ourselves, right? How to not commit adultery, right? But at the same time, remember, we're not supposed to stone people or give offerings for our sins to the <laughs> priesthood. Okay, so now you also have to deal with that. So don't worry about individuals who have faith that the Messiah existed and resurrected, right? Teach us the Old Testament and teach us how to live. Stick to that. Thank you, thank you Father McKean. There's a strange, and I'll say this quickly, and then we can, as you're led, continue reading. There's a strange, like I say, there's a pattern when one denies the Messiah. But, that, but what's very interesting is that there's this strange obsession with the New Testament for some reason. Mm -hmm. If the New Testament is not what people are saying it is, we're saying it's true. But what I'm saying is that people have this issue, and this has been going on for thousands of years. This has been debated for a long time, even before we were born, I okay. get But what's interesting is that there's this strange obsession with disproving the New Testament. If the New Testament is not what you believe, then preach from the Tanakh. Consistently preach from the Tanakh. Mm -hmm. But again, it's just very interesting how this strange obsession and this passion and the New Testament is constantly being referenced to in a negative light. It's very interesting, I gave. Um, it is very interesting, especially mm -hmm. when Yahushua, in the Gospels, according to the Gospels, he went back to the Old Testament, and he yes, said he didn't come to abolish the law. Or the prophets. Right? No, he did not come to do that. And throughout the epistles, when it came to Paul and Kapha, they didn't neglect the Old Testament, right? No, sir. It's not like they said, don't read the Old Testament. 
Don't they believe never, in those prophets. They never said that. They never said that. Never. Nope, absolutely not. And then we have historical sources also validate who these individuals were, that Yahushua is the son of the Almighty, right? The eternal one, right? Yes. They do validate that Paul did exist and he was an apostle and he uh, suffered martyrdom and he wrote certain epistles and Luke and all these other individuals. So you can't get past that unless you have a source from the first, second century who's a Jew who says otherwise, by all means. But if you just have sources from um, rabbinical uh, or, um, thank you, my father, I got my king, from individuals who don't believe in the Messiah, right? From um, different, whether it's uh, different churches or, uh, you know, some of the rabbis, then what are their sources and how late are their sources and what are the interpretations of the sources that they're using? Yes, sir. Then they used to believe in the Messiah, but then all of a sudden, for whatever reason, their midrashim has changed. Yep. So that's something to look at as well. Exactly. So, but family, as a father king had us to just really just expound on these things. Akiyai, can you please read? Because people still are saying they still have this issue, even though our king just proved that David did write it. Our father mm -hmm. king's the spirit. Yes, sir. Uh, there's there's particular uh, rabbis out there. And, and they know who they are. They're teaching their Talmudim, their students, that uh, David or Da'uyah didn't write Psalms 110. Can you please read, and let's look at what this particular rabbi, our, our rabbi, what did he say, brother, to the people, please? Just um, Yeah, so he says, verse 41 again, he says, how can they say that Christ is the son of the uh, David? Now, David himself said in the book of Psalms, now, again, so now David himself in the book of Psalms. So this is Nasi Yahushua proclaiming David wrote it, right? Okay. Yes. The Lord said to my Lord, and I'm just reading how it's, how it's read. Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore, David calls him Lord. How is he then his son? Then in the hearing of all the people, disciples beware of the scribes who desire to go around in long robes love greetings in the marketplaces the best seats in the synagogues and the best places at feasts and who devour, devour widows houses and for a pretense make long prayers these will receive greater condemnation that's powerful so our rabbi is telling us how there were certain particular ones out there who were, it was a certain, a certain way they like to carry themselves and receive honor. See, Master Yahushua, when he was led, he, as a father king, had him to do so. He talked about some of his own people, the ones that were doing the wrong thing. Master Yahushua wasn't afraid to do that. This is not anti-Jew. No, he's telling it like it is. But it's so interesting that our rabbi, our rabbi Jai, he's telling us, my family, and I can, you know, we're learning that he's saying that David wrote it. Yad wrote it. This is what our master is saying. Yes, he is. Absolutely. Hmm. And we can't get past that. We can't. Nope. That's powerful. That is powerful. So, uh, brother, you have anything else that you nope. see? Nope. Okay, so, so we're going to go to Mark uh, go chapter to 12, verse yes, 35. Sir. We'll go to our ancestor, John Mark or Marcos. And let's look at something interesting. Mark, the 12th chapter, starting at verse 35. We hope you all are having a wonderful time. We are, we're having a wonderful time. Okay, and again, this is our master. We're gonna see how he references and it's, hey, we're going here as we're led because it's showing how Matthew wrote about this. Matthew, who she was apostle, of course. Maruka, who was a disciple in the company of Shaul, showing that this was passed down. He quoted about Matthew, who she was talking about Psalms 110. 
Now we're going to one of our other ancestors, uh, John Mark, or Yehuganon Marcos. He's writing about it. So, uh, Aga, you want me to read or you would like to? Uh, go ahead. Uh, I just read, so please. Okay, yes, sir. So again, family, Mark chapter 12, um, and commencing at verse 35. And it says, and Yahushua answering began to say, as he taught in the temple, how is it that the scribes say that the Messiah or Christ is the son of David or Dariya? Dariya himself said in the Holy Spirit, the master Yahuwah said to my master, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies beneath your feet. David or Dariyad himself calls him master. And so in what sense is he his son? And the great crowd enjoyed listening to him. And in his teaching, he was saying, beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and like respectful greetings in the marketplaces and chief seats in the synagogues and places of honor at banquets who devour widows' houses and for appearances sake offer long prayers these will receive greater condemnation. So we're reading from the same account, but notice how it's passed down in the records, in the mm -hmm. historical records. And notice what, as it's recorded here, notice how it says in verse 36, David himself said in the Holy Spirit. See, people are talking about authorship, Akiai, and my brothers and sisters out there, but we're not looking at the author who guided the vessels that wrote. And the that Holy was Spirit. the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then you're moved to write by the Ruach HaKadosh, or the Holy Spirit, the Hagiyan Penu. A lot of people don't believe that the word was, as in the scholastic world, they'll say God breathed, or in, it basically the Almighty inspired. People don't believe that. Just because you have scribes who are writing, and people are so quick to condemn the scribal evidence, again, that same, thank you, Master, for your wisdom, that same argument could be rendered to those as far as even in as far as writers of the Tanakh, we see variances even in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Mm -hmm. We see different interpretations from the Qumran community mm -hmm. versus the Pharisaic community. So we can see the interpretations nonetheless. So notice how this knowledge of our master, blessed be he, Rabbi Ayyub Master Yahushua, notice how he talked about Psalms 110 and how that was passed down through his apostles and disciples during the first century. This is why we was led to go into these accounts, even though it's showing it from a, as far as a repeated cycle, what you're seeing is the passing on of the record of Master Yahushua's interpretation of Psalms 10. So, I gave you anything? I digress. You know what, teaching over. Just kidding. <laughs> oh, there's more. There's more that I find King want to share with all of you. And as well as us, we're all we're going to learn some more things. So, but this is solid, brothers and sisters. And people who try to come against it, you do what you do, but our Father King will deal with you according. We don't have to, you know, fight with you. We just, as a Father King lead, we just put out their inspired inspiration. So, thank you, Master. So now, my family, let's look at again. So, this is a solid statement. Psalms 110 is referenced in the Gospel of Matthew, the Apostle of Matthew Hushu. It's referenced in the Gospel according to Luke, the physician. This was a man that was in the company of Apostle Shaul. For those people saying that Shaul didn't know about the virgin birth, you're sadly mistaken because Luca was in the company of Shaul. So we see Luke here, he specified that. We see John Mark, who's the disciple. Of, of Master Yahushua. You see, it's my family. So now let us go into the historical book of Acts. It's getting interesting now. It's getting fun, my family. So now let's go to Acts, the second chapter. And because there's a lot of people out here preaching or attempting to preach things. But see, the problem is, is that you got to go to the apostles. See this? The apostles, they expounded on the beautiful things of the prophets. And you're not going to negate the apostles. You're not just, you're not going to do it. Acts chapter 2. And let's go to verse 32. And this is what this is what our ancestor, Kapha, he who was an Israelite, he was a Jew. As a matter of fact, there were many Jews from many nations that came to the 
as far as Pentecost. So uh, let's examine his sermon, Akai, and uh, either I can read or you can read if you let, or uh, like I can read. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's look at Acts uh, chapter two, and let's look at verse verse thirty two. And Please. this, uh, as it says here, Jesus God, uh, or this Yahushua, the, uh, the Almighty, has raised up, of which we are all witnesses. Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of the Almighty, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this which you now see and hear. For David, or Dawiyad, did not ascend into the heavens, but he says himself, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this, as it says here, Jesus or Yahushua, whom you crucified, both Lord or Master and anointed one. You see that, my family? Now, this is coming from the mouth of our ancestors. I don't know about you all out there who deny him, Master Yahushua, but this is our ancestors' family. Kafa, the apostle, he's preaching this and he's preaching it to. According to verse 36, it says, therefore, let all the house of Israel know. So the Israelites, the Jews, they received this, as well as the Gentiles later on. But specifically here in this particular context, this is the sermon coming from Kafa. This is what he proclaimed. The apostles were with him, too, the other 11. Matthias, of course, taking uh, the place of our ancestor who fell, Yehuda, Judas, Iscariot. So... Notice that Kafa, he said, when you look at verse 34, it says, for it was not David or Dariah who ascended into heaven, but he himself says. And then he quotes Psalms 19. This is our primary source, Kafa the apostle, from our other primary source, Master Yahushua. See, this was taught and passed down. So Kafa is saying here, as he preached, that David wrote it, that David said it. Not some, uh, Kafa didn't say some unnamed psalmist said, <laughs> and then quoted Psalms 110. He didn't do that. That's not what he preached. Master Yahushua, he did not declare, blessed be he, the son of the living almighty. Abba spoke through him, blessed be he, as people like to say. Blessed be Abba, when he spoke through the son, I follow through the his son, through the precious spirit, did not say that some unnamed psalmist wrote Psalms 110. That's not what our master specified, nor did Kafa specify. Now, let's say in Acts chapter 2, just want to... as we to verse 41. Yes, sir. Verses 41 and 42, uh, I get you, please. Yes. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 souls were added to them. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in prayers. That's powerful. How many, okay, how many, um, this is powerful. How many Jews, how many Yahudim that were saved, brother? How many were baptized? It added that Three, day? 3,000 souls were added that day. Now, this is before our ancestor Cornelius, who was, who was of the nations. Some people say he was an Israelite. They want to try to say, you know, that false doctrine that people was really teaching, saying that, you know, the Gentiles is Israel in a Gentile mind. When mm -hmm. we see our ancestors here, these are Israelites that are receiving the gospel. And we have in the record here, 3,000. Remember, the, the gospel, as far as the historical account of Acts, as well as the gospel of Luke, or Luca, it was given to Theophilus. So we see here that Kafa preached, and then we see 3,000 Jews. 
See this? Now they were also proselytes with them as well. So we see that they received salvation. And notice how this was a part of the apostles' doctrine. And it's interesting because people to this day, they're saying that Master Yahushua was not the Messiah. They're saying he doesn't fulfill Psalms 110. You see how they're preaching against the apostles' doctrine? You see, it's my family. So if anybody out there who's preaching against the apostles' doctrine, speaking against Master Yahushua, you see this, if they don't repent, don't even bid them the almighty speed. Keep it moving. You see, it's my family. Pray for them. Correct. Keep it. That's another spirit, the spirit of concision. I agree. Anything else? Um, I was just, it was just interesting how in verse 41, it says, those who gladly received it. So it has to be something that you accept and you receive. You have to be willing to accept and receive the doctrine. Yes, right? sir. So, yes, sir. and a lot of it is faith, right? Because now we're over 2,000 years. It's not like anybody was there recording them with a camcorder or a video camera or anything like that. It's yes. what's being written and then passed down that we have to kind of focus on. So that's all. And, and another thing too, brother, as you said that, so powerful that you just specified that because even to this day, what's so powerful is that people say that they kind of have this issue about not having the actual autographs as far as the handwritten, as far as by the apostles. But can they provide today the handwriting of Masha? No, they absolutely cannot provide that. Or, or, or do we have today, as far as the Tanakh that we have, that is in every synagogue or every synagogue today, that's been on, it's on copies of books, these things have been redacted and standardized by the Mesorites. So the same argument again, if they're looking for the originals of the apostles and the early disciples, then can they provide the very, uh, as far as the very stone tables where our Heavenly Father through his beautiful finger wrote on the tables of stone? No. Can they provide that? I don't believe they can. But does that mean that we are to speak evil and say that Abba did not write that or that Abba did not also dictate Masha and command him to write all of his words? No. We'd be contradicting ourselves. Correct. As we see the opposite side do. Thank you, Robert King. Thank you. Beautiful. So, uh, now, my brother says, now we're going to go to uh, uh, just look at some of our, our ancestor, Apostle Shaul. We you know people, a lot of haters that hate on Apostle Shaul. But we're going to just look at some interest and see that Shaul, uh, did he teach something? Uh, was he saying that Master Yahushua was not on the right hand of the Father? Let's see his understanding of what he knew. Remember now, Shaul was a Pharisee, so he would have known about Psalms 110. So yes, family, let's go to, let's go to uh, Ephesians. And remember now, this particular letter, this epistle was passed on to the assembly. Shaul didn't write a letter in this particular context to the Ephesians. He didn't write a letter and gave it to one person. This was given to a multitude of believers who were disciples of our rabbi, Master Yahushua, the Messiah. So let's go to Ephesians chapter one, please. Thank you, Father King. Ephesians chapter one. Okay. And we're going to start at verse 15. Yes, sir. And, oh, right. okay, I'll I go ahead. Yes, yes sir. No. I go, you go. I go, you go. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so Ephesians 1 and starting at verse 15. And it reads, for this reason, I too, having heard of the faith in the Master Yahushua, which exists among you, and your love for all the saints. Do not cease giving thanks for you while making mention of you in my prayers, that the Almighty of our Master, Yahushua Messiah, the Father of glory, may give to you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the surpassing greatness of his power toward us who believe? 
These are in accordance with the working of the strength of his might, which he brought about in Christ, or Christ, when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things in subjection under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church or the assembly, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. That's powerful. Notice the declaration of our ancestor, Apostle Sharu, one of the apostles who came later of Master Yahushua. Notice how he identified as far as the faith, the hope, what was passed down to the believers. If you look at verse 17 and analyze it correctly, my brothers and sisters, Shaul, look at verse 17 again. He says that the almighty of our master, Yahushua Messiah, the father of glory may give to you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. Thank you, master. Shaul didn't say as far as giving me written documents and written evidence. He didn't say that, did he? The faith. There's nothing wrong with these things, but we must have faith. We must have hope in him. And Absolutely. notice how Shaul also specify how Abba raised him from the dead, exalted him at his right hand. The father put all things under the son's feet. What is he, what is he alluding to? What is he talking about? Ayayi, what do you, what do you see? What are your thoughts on that? Uh, I mean, I agree. I agree with the fact that, um, and that was uh, one, the one thing that, you know, stood out to me as well, that, um, where it says in verse 15, therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the master Yahushua and your love for all the saints, so do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the almighty of our master Yahushua, the Messiah, the father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. So it's the faith and then the wisdom of knowledge that's given to us because of our faith in him. That's that's thank you for my key. That's probably what you just said. You, my family. I hope you you pay attention to what I, my brother was just letting us say. Because see, the source again. There's nothing wrong with information when it's utilized the right way. But the as our Father King had, like he said in previous teachings of our Heavenly Father, our Father must guide you. We must be guided by His precious Spirit. Because you can have information all day long and have sources all day long, but if his spirit is not guiding us, mm -hmm. how can we truly express it or understand it properly? So yeah. notice, this is what Shaul passed on to the, to the believers. Mm -hmm. this, is what, this is what is passed on. Yeah, the enlightenment. And, you know, we, it, it's, it's a calling that we have to be willing to accept. And if we're going to be easily... Um, Please God, no father, my king. If yes. we're going to be easily convinced, right, or have our faith and belief shaken, then now we really need to question: Do what sort of belief and faith do we actually have for it to be so easily shaken? Because once you have a a foundation and a belief, and you begin to proclaim that to others for years. And then all of a sudden you hear other individuals who have a, have a different belief and it makes you question your faith and your belief. And now you start looking into other things. Now it's a matter of, you know, now you have to look, our, we have to look ourselves in the mirror to really understand what sort of faith we truly have. Because um, we can have a, Please got my phone, my king. Please got. You got a sense of, uh, of righteousness, but then to deny the powers thereof, right? We can have these sort of beliefs and the conversations and 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 uh, dialogue, but once that small little thing that can be planted, and if we're not really careful and guided in our faith and in our in our belief, it'll shake us. Absolutely. I agree, my brother. 
my brother. And as well, brothers and sisters, here's the thing too. When, when people are coming out expressing uh, the gospels, you know, one would assume that they already knew the revelation of the Tanakh. And so this is where we have to continue to just always study. And it doesn't mean that we're better than, than others, but we have to continue to study. But if our faith is easily shaken through the proclamation of Master Yahushua, then how could we really believe? Oh, thank you, Father Makim. Mm. How could we really believe what Masha wrote when we don't even believe Master Yahushua's words? Because he wrote of him. You see this? And so, I mean, people may have a different opinion on that, but again, how can you even believe Master Yahushua's words? You never really did believe them. You never really did. So how can you believe Masha's words? When no one how saw that you, Masha wrote it, right? How can you really believe the Torah? That's powerful. Yeah. So again, my, my family, it's just showing how this knowledge, as far as of Master Yahushua, the father subjecting. Notice how Shaul, he's not saying that the master came and he... He conquered it, you know, as far as he's putting his own enemies. No, 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 no. He Notice what he's saying. He says the father is going to subject all of his enemies under his feet. He's drawing from Psalms 110. This is a Pharisee. Of course, many people don't like Apostle Shaul. But Shaul, he was pointing, he received the revelation. Speaking of Master Yahushua, he received that revelation. And notice how it's being passed down to the believers. Now we see we see it being passed down to the nations, the Gentiles. Kafa already proclaimed Psalms 110, what we saw in Acts. Now look how now we see Shaul coming to the faith, and now he's writing to, as far as the assembly of Ephesus, and teaching them as well, the doctrine. Okay, you have anything else, sir? No, I, I what well, made me think about how um, he he was given the power and the authority to master Yahushua, right? Our Heavenly Father was the one who did that. Yes, sir. And it made me think about how our Heavenly Father said to Masha, I will make you an Elohim or a mighty one to Pharaoh. And Moses and Aaron will be your prophet. Well, his prophet, correct. Yeah. Um, so if our Heavenly Father has the ability and the power to give them that authority, amongst the people to prove who Abba, the almighty Yahuwah is. Why, and, and then also to all the different prophets, right? Who spoke in on behalf of, you know, our, our Heavenly Father, right? Yes, sir. Then how can it be a question and a doubt when it came to Master Yahushua? Because why would it be a doubt and a question for him, but then not any of the other prophets at all whatsoever when it came to the power of the uh, the power of attorney uh thank you my father my king the power of attorney yes sir absolutely and masha said that our father was going to send someone like him and so moses. masha is moses is the only prophet that the that's as far as that's in the tanakh where our heavenly father said i will make you a elohim before farah and aaron sure your brother will be your prophet. Mm -hmm. So that's powerful. Yes, um, so let's go to, did you have anything else I gave you with that? Nope, you... uh, we're going to go to Colossians chapter three, I believe, starting at yes. verse one. Yes, sir. So let's go to, let's see what Shaul's passed on to other assemblies in Colossae. So let's go to uh, Colossians chapter three, my family. And... We're going to read verses one through four. Mm -hmm. If then you were raised with the anointed, seek those things which are above, where the anointed or priest is, sitting at the right hand of the Almighty. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with the anointed one in the almighty. When the anointed one who is our life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. That's powerful. Mm -hmm. Notice again, Shaul is teaching the assembly. Where is the Messiah? He's risen up and he's seated at the right hand of the almighty. Notice how he's teaching that. 
that's something that's consistent throughout the scriptures. It's, it's, it's powerful. Even when you go back again, my family, you go to Psalms 110, Abba told someone to sit by him until he makes all of his enemies, as far as his foot, their footstool, his footstool. Thank you, Father King, for the correction. So now we see here that the apostle is speaking that. This is just showing you briefly how this was passed down. These people, they received this belief. And when our father can have us go into history, we're going to see how it was continually passed down. So now let's go to, you have anything I gave you or no? Okay. All right. So now, okay. I can hear you. I gave you your voice. My bad. I'm sorry. Uh, no, I had nothing to add. I was saying, uh, so I believe now we're going to Hebrews 1. Yes, sir. So family, okay. let's go to Hebrews and Hebrews chapter 1 and Hebrews 1. This is a letter to the Hebrews and let's look at verses one through five. Okay. So it says here, <clears throat> it says, the almighty after he spoke long ago to the fathers in the prophets in many portions and in many ways in these last days has spoken to us in his son or by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things through whom also he made the world. And he is the radiance of his glory and the exact representation of his nature and upholds all things by the word of his power. When he had made purification of sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much better than the angels or the messengers as he has inherited a more excellent name than they. For to which of the angels or the messengers did he ever say, you are my son, today I have begotten you. And again, I will be a father to him and he shall be a son to me. So <clears throat> again, just briefly here at verse five, we see the significance of the son. We see that the son basically sat down on the right hand after he accomplished his mission as far as dealing with our sins, he sat on the right hand of the majesty on high. This is what it specified. Now, look at verse, just go to verse 13 and look what he says here. He says, he's still expounding through what? The, Tanakh, the, the scriptures, the Tanakh. He says, but to which of the angels has he ever said, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? This is what Shaul was saying to the assembly. He expounded from the scriptures. He wasn't expounding from, uh, from a pagan book or something like that. Notice how he's drawing from the very scriptures. You see, my family. He's not saying that this was some unnamed psalmist that the father has put by his right hand. That's not what he said. Because if that was the case, then he would have specified that in verse one, as far as this was the one that the father spoke through and created all things through. That's not what Shaul specified. He specified the son of the living almighty, Master Yahushua. This is solid. This is concrete. This is what the scriptures teach. You have a choice to believe in it or don't. That's up to you. Absolutely. I got you have anything? Nope. Else? Nope. Okay, so we move. Uh, we move. move on to Hebrews uh, chapter 8. Stay in the book of Hebrews 8, my brothers and sisters, and let's go to, let's go to, stay in the book of Hebrews. We're going to go to chapter 8. Thank you, Master. And let's look at verses one and two. Now, this is the main point of the things we are saying. We have such a high priest who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord, as it says here, erected and not man. That's powerful. Again, we see the assembly. These are Hebrews now. This mm -hmm. is a letter to the Hebrews. Hebrews. Correct. 
feeding this knowledge of Massey mm -hmm. See this? And this, yep. Mm -hmm. And it says, for every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices. Therefore, it is necessary that this one also have something to offer. That's powerful. That's powerful. So now he's acknowledging Yahushua as in a priesthood, right? Yes, sir. being offered, able to offer something, right? Yes, sir. And what did he offer up? He offered himself up. There's a lot of people who have an issue with that, but as I find a keen lead for that for another time, but people have an issue with that. You see, they have an issue with this particular term, human sacrifice. But you don't see Master Hushua. He never declared and said, I am a human. He never said that. He never Slaughter said that. me now. Slaughter me. <laughs> Our master so never said that. No, he did not say that. These, these, these wicked spirits have these particular terms mm -hmm. that Master Hushua himself never specified. The apostle Yehukanan, I'm sorry, Yehukanan, the apostles, they never said that. Yehukanan, mm -hmm. the Baptist, the immerser, he didn't say, behold, the human sacrifice of the Almighty. <laughs> <laughs> He said, that. he said, this is the Lamb of the Almighty, fam. Yeah. So it shows that these demonic spirits, they have an issue. I'm talking about the spirits now, separating from the vessels, but these demonic spirits have an issue with, with hearing and comprehending. So it's, it's very interesting. Now, brothers and sisters, let's, stay, let's go to Hebrews, the 10th chapter. <laughs> Just look at something interesting. Oh, man, that's funny. Oh, and, gosh. Uh, 10, 12 to 13. Yes, sir. And I'll read those verses there. So Hebrews chapter 10, family. And just looking at verses 12 and 13, it says, but he having offered one sacrifice for sins for all time, sat down at the right hand of the almighty, waiting from that time onward until his enemies be made a footstool for his feet. There it is again. So we see the expounding to not, not only, again, Shaul, some people call this, they'll say the Hebrew writer. We have sources that say that Shaul wrote this epistle. So we see that Shaul preached not only to the Gentiles of Master Yahushua on the right hand, but even to Hebrews. The other apostles, Kappa preached that Master Yahushua was where? On the right hand of our Heavenly Father. So we see here that Shaul, the writer of the Hebrews, the writer to the Hebrews, as far as the letter, he's expounding here and drawing from Psalms 110. Akai, you have anything there to add? Or? Uh, no, uh, that was perfect. Now we can move on to uh, Hebrews chapter 12. Yes, sir. Hebrews we're going to read from verses 1 through 2. So Hebrews yes, chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. Just having a, a great time. Playtime. We move it, family. And I thought I can't. Are you there, bro? Yes, sir. I'm here. Okay, perfect. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking on to uh, Jesus or Yahushua, the author and finisher of our faith. There it goes again, that word in terms of faith, their faith in Master Yahushua, right? Yes, sir. And then also when it, uh, notice how when you go back up, it says, uh, we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. So now there were witnesses surrounding them all, right? As it continued, as that faith and belief began to grow and spread out throughout the region. You understand? Now, yes, sir. who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down where? At the right hand of the throne of the almighty so again as we see here going back to quoting what david was led to say where master yushua was to sit down on the at the right hand of the almighty 
And because our almighty, our heavenly father said so. It wasn't like Yusha was like, hey, just to let you know, I'm going to sit next to you because I feel like it. <laughs> no, <laughs> it was a commandment. And he said, I, this is your place right here on my right hand. That's powerful. Yes, sir. Do you have anything to add? Well, I agree 100%. And I just want to say this. These sources here, what we're reading so far, these are this is towards the first century. This is not I'm after. I'm sorry, the when? The, what century? Uh, the, the first century? It was the end of the first century. Okay. Okay. This information was given to the believers. I just this want to make sure that we repeated it. Uh, yes, sir. This, this wasn't after Constantine, where or this was not people with funny little hats on sitting around <laughs> and saying, hey, guys, this is what we're going to do. We're going to make this up, and this is what we're going to do. No, that's yeah. not not in this particular context. Mm -hmm. We're not saying yes, that it wasn't, we're not saying it wasn't wicked counsels and things of that nature, but in this particular context, no. This was what no. was was the end of the first century to the believers. Absolutely. Uh, my family, uh, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Let's go back. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. This is what our ancestor Shaul, the apostle, had to say to the assembly at Corinth. These are, again, the assembly at Corinth, this is more than one person. So let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and let's start at verse 20. Verses 20 through 28. And it reads here, it says, but now the anointed has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who are asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ or the Messiah, all shall be made alive. But each in his own order, the anointed one or the Messiah, the first fruits, after that, those who are the anointed, the anointed one at his coming or crease at his, at his coming. Verse 24, then comes the end when he delivers up the kingdom to the almighty and father, when he has abolished all rule and all authority and power for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be abolished is death. For he has put all things in subjection under his feet. But when he says all things are put in subjection, it is evident that he is accepted who put all things in subjection to him. And when all things are subjected to him, then the son himself also will be subjected to the one who subjected all things to him that the almighty may be all in all. What are people talking about that the son is exalting himself before the father or the son is the father? It says the father subjected all things under his feet. Mm -hmm. It talks about the son coming to put down all rule and then the son is going to submit these deliver, things. Yep. He's going to deliver the kingdom to God or the good one. Yeah, the father. The father, and then he himself is going to be subjected to the one who's put all things under him. And the so Almighty is going to be submissive. He's going to still, so it's still all about Abba, the Almighty, correct? Abba is still being glorified as the most true, the one true, most high Almighty one, even in the New Testament. So it's just interesting. But what's powerful is the fact that he's drawing from Psalms 110. As far as the father putting all things under his feet, this is powerful. He's also speaking about future tense, about what will happen when all things is put under his feet and how the son will come down to subdue everything and then submit those wonderful things to his father. And then he himself is going to submit himself to his father. That's powerful. This was in the, towards the end of the first century. And now we're going to get to, now this was all dealing with question number one. So now we're going to go to question number two. <laughs> now we're going to go to question number two as our Father King inspired us with these beautiful questions, family. So listen carefully, and enemies as well. 
It says here, was this teaching and understanding of Psalms 110 passed down in early centuries or in the early centuries? So make sure I read that correctly. <laughs> yes, and uh, was it passed? Was Psalms the understanding of Psalms one ten passed down in the early centuries? That's a powerful question, isn't it, Doctor? It is. So, so yeah. What do you think about that question? Before we go into it, like, what do you think? Do you think? What's your thoughts on that, brother? What I think is, um, what I think to myself is just how please got enough on my key. How it was said. Um, in the Torah, how we talked about uh, teaching things to your children, right? It had to be the teachings and the commandments had to be passed down, right? Yes, so sir. things were passed down from generation to generation all throughout life in the scripture, right? Um, just like now, I mean, we can say that, um, I don't know, for example, let's say I'm a professional hockey player, right? And I have kids. Well, guess what? They're going to see that. And what will I more than likely pass down? My knowledge and love for hockey to my children, right? And yes, that love and knowledge will be passed down to them. And they will pass it down and so on and so forth, right? So when I hear that question, that's what I think about. Was it passed down, right? During the first or early centuries, who was it passed down to, and what did they say in regards to Psalms 110? Yes, sir. Now we got to look at the historicity behind it. Yes, sir. I think I found a key. So now, my brothers and sisters, um, I got here. Is it okay if I share my screen? Uh, yes, please. Okay, so now we're going to look at, uh, we're going to go into some history here. It's a final key lead. So we're going to go to, First Clement. And for those of you, uh, as my Aki, we both have this particular book here, the uh, Apostolic Fathers, the uh, Greek text and English translation, third edition by uh, Mr. Michael W. Holmes. And so we're going to go into what was passed down. We're going to just examine and look at one of our ancestors, First Clement. Um, he also, it wasn't just one elder, you had a collective group of elders, and they actually wrote two. Uh, interestingly, you had the assembly of uh, Rome right into the assembly of, as far as the current Quora. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to go to First Clement, and we're going to look at starting at chapter thirty-six, starting 36. at verse one. <clears throat> starting at verse one. Let me get there. Okay. <clears throat> okay, you want to read, or you want me to read? Oh, uh, I can read if you okay. don't mind. Can you see that or you want me to make it? Yes, sir. I can see it. All right. This is the way, and I'm just going to read it as it's written here. Okay. Yes, this is the way, dear friends, in which we found our salvation, namely Jesus Christ, or Yahushua the Messiah, the high priest of our offerings, the benefactor and helper of our weakness. Through him, we look steadily into the heights of heaven. Through him, we see as in a mirror his faith, his faultless and transcendent face. Through him, the eyes of our hearts have been opened. Through him, our foolish and darkened mind springs up into the light. Through him, the master has willed that we should taste immortal knowledge, for he being the radiance of his majesty, is as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent. For so it is written, he makes his angels winds and his ministers flames of fire. But of his son, the master spoke thus, you are my son, today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the Gentiles for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. And again, he says to him, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Who That's then fine. are these enemies? That's fine. No, 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 you, can, you can finish that. Can finish. Those who are wicked and resist his will. 
or that's resist powerful. the truth. <laughs> that's powerful. So my family, what we see here is that the, we see here the, the, as far as the passing down of that knowledge, as far as who the son is. And we see uh, right here in the early centuries, we see here, this is towards the close of the end, end centuries as well. As far as the first century, we see that the elder Clement, as well as the other elders who are sending this letter to a collective, this is a collective letter to our ancestors who also believe in Matthew Hushua and Corinth. So from Rome to Corinth, we see an understanding of Psalms 110. They did now these, these particular ancestors did not say these are the anointed faith. They didn't say that that this was some unnamed psalmist or someone we didn't know writing about David or Dawya. That's not what they specified. No. They understood as it was passed down from our master to the apostles to faithful men that this was referring to Master Yahushua of Nazareth. You see, my brothers and sisters. I got you. You have any? Uh, no, okay. sir. I have nothing. Nope. Okay. The next source we're going to look at is um, this particular source here. Me and my brother as well, we have this here, a dictionary of early Christian beliefs uh, by David W. Bursaw. So now we have here, as far as, let's see here. <clears throat> and it says here, early understanding of Psalms 110, pardon my spelling family. Uh, yeah, Akiai, uh, I, uh, that says referring. Referring, <laughs> Akiai. Uh, you you got to delete the, the extra the E. What's the proper spelling on that, Akiai? You got to delete the E before the I. Okay, so, okay, family, hold on now. And then you got to do a, it's a double, uh, no, no, the E before the I. <laughs> Okay, so let's take that out. No, no wait a okay. minute. So, no, delete. And it, this just goes to show the humility and how we can yeah. make errors, right? Yes, and we, we have to be co corrected. Yes, and now you put a, an extra R. And uh, guess yeah. what? Uh, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. <laughs> you know what I think it was, brother? It sure looked it good when I was working on it. I think I probably hit something. So my family, <laughs> so my family, it showed, because my intent was to spell everything correct. But thank our Father King that we get it right. Is that right, brother? You check the spelling? Yes, sir. Uh, the, the spelling is good. Okay. So I'm making sure that we're going to the right source. And it's a beautiful thing. You see, you see my family, how Father King, see, we didn't try to hide nothing and act like it wasn't there. No, we didn't try to do that, family. So I thank our Father King for helping us out. So now we're gonna look at this quotation from one of our ancestors, uh, Justin the Witness. And um, I get you wanna read it or you want me to read it? Uh, yeah, I can read it. Mm -hmm. um, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. I am not ignorant that you Jews venture to expound this song as if it referred to King Hezekiah However, that you are mistaken, I will prove to you. And this mm. was in the, the first century, right? Uh, Eastern writer. And that's, One, um, yep. 160, that's second century. I'm sorry. Uh, 160, second century. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, I, you. thank you, my father, my king. <laughs> so what's interesting there is that now we see another, a different belief that was being floated around, right? That yes, now they were saying that it was referring to King Hezekiah. That's interesting. That's, That's powerful. interesting. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. And of course, we have the source here for those of you who have the book on page 447. And as I type here, uh, let me make sure everything is spelled correctly. It says the, the teaching and understanding of Psalms 110 from our Master Yahushua, the, the Messiah, his apostles and disciples, to those who followed them from the first, second, and third centuries were passed down. You see, my brother, sister. So, um, as our father King had us just to go there and to look at that, we see the fact that 
that was a understanding that once passed down. Notice how Justin the witness actually had that understanding. Mm -hmm. Notice the contrast of the other interpretation in his day of how some of the particular Jews or Yahudim interpreted Psalms 110, referencing that to King Hezekiah or Hezekiah. Yep. That's interesting, isn't it, bro? Mm -hmm. It's how very over interesting. Time, over time, we see that development in the early right. century. People actually a different, believe. yep, a different beliefs. And and as time went on, there was a great falling away, right? Yes, sir. Eventually at some point, but the the foundation during these early centuries, what was passed down, that foundational truth and teachings and faith was being given. Yes, sir. Absolutely. So now, yep. So now we're going to go with. Um, so now we're going to Eusebius. Right? Yes, sir. Or Eusebius, uh, church it, history. So uh, you can show them how yours looks. And then there's two different ones. Mine is uh, translated by C.F. Cruz. Looks like this. All right. Okay. You want to go ahead. And so this is going to be in book one, right? Yes, sir. Actually, let's see. Yes, sir. Book one. And we're looking Chapter at three. Three. And let me go up a little bit so you all can see the heading for those of you who may have you say this. It is go up right quick. The heading on mine says the name of Jesus, as yeah. also that of Christ, was both known and honored from ancient times by the inspired okay. prophets. So, so that's what this here, my family, is what my Akai had actually read. So okay. we're reading this section and we're going to scroll down. That way you all know who, who those of you who have the history. And so now it says here, and in section 14, it says, do you see it there in your- uh, Yes, bro. Your yep, I'm already, I'm already there. Okay, and it says here, my family, it says, and not only Isaiah, let me see something. Actually, let me go up, let me go up right Yeah, go here. to verse 13, yes, sir. Okay, it says, and he was not anointed with oil prepared from material substances but as befits divinity with the divine spirit himself by participation in the unbegotten deity of the father. And this is taught also again by Isaiah, who exclaims as if in the person of Christ himself, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, therefore hath he anointed me. He has sent me to preach the gospel to the poor, to proclaim deliverance to captives and recovery of sight to the blind. That's powerful, my family. Notice what Eusebius is as far as passing down what he's writing in the history. Now look at section 14. It says, and not only Isaiah, but also David addresses him saying, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of equity is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and has hated iniquity. Therefore, God, thy God, have anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And this is uh, the scripture references that he's quoting from my family. It says here, here the scripture calls him God in the first verse. In the second, it honors him with a royal scepter. So that's powerful for those, for that particular, that's a particular subject there. But understand how this is passed in the histories. Mm -hmm. Now look at section 15. It says, then a little further on, after the divine and royal power, it represents him in the third place is having become Christ, being anointed, not with oil made of material substance, but with the divine oil of gladness. It thus indicates his special honor far superior to and different from that of those who as types were of old anointed in a more material way. Let's stop for a moment. Notice how you say this, because a lot of people, you know, as we grow, people have an issue of that word Christ or Crete. Notice how he identifies, now he wrote in Greek, but notice how he identifies that title Crete with anointed. Do you see this? So just understand that there. And notice how he also talks about the particular types that the scripture referenced pointing to the Messiah. Now, section 16 says, and elsewhere, the same writer speaks of him as follows. 
Lou 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 David, the same writer. Lou David, he talked about that earlier. So he says, and elsewhere, the same writer speaks of him as follows. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. And out of the womb before the morning star have I begotten thee. The Lord have sworn and he will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek or Melchizedek. And this mm-hmm. is a scripture reference. That's Psalms the quotation. And Psalms 110 and 4. And notice when it says the same writer, my family, when you go back up, he's talking about Isaiah, but then he specifically specifies David as addressing who? The anointed one. Correct. We see, even in history, we see that knowledge was passed down. Thank you, my father, my king. So, brother, (laughs) we see in history Thank you, Father King, for correcting me in the spelling and blessing me with my Akiai to be able to help me and for the assembly to see the humility to understand how you always come through, even in, during mistakes. Isn't that wonderful, family? Isn't that so good? Brother, you have any uh, thing you'd like to explain? No, that was, that was beautiful. So it begs to, to bring up our third and final question. Oh, this is powerful right here. Go ahead, Akiai. Did a true king of Israel sit on the throne of Yahuwah the Almighty. Uh, can we repeat that slowly for people who did may not? a true king of Israel sit on the throne of Yahuwah the Almighty? And, and was this king anointed? He was an anointed king, right? Okay. Was he an, an yes? So did a true anointed king? So there, that's a better question. Did a true wow. anointed king? So uh, I think we should go to First Chronicles chapter twenty nine. Now this is in the wait, man. Hold on. Wait a minute. Hold on now. Okay. Uh huh. All right. I was just getting my ears ready. So <laughs> what we're going to go to? We're going to the. The Tanakh, right? This is yes, in the sir. Tanakh. Okay. This is in the Old Testament. So this okay. is not the Christian New Testament, <laughs> as they say. Okay, so we're gonna go to First Chronicles. Thank you, Father McKee, who you are. First Chronicles chapter 29. Chapter 29, okay. And Starting at verse 10. Let me know when you're there, bro. Okay. First crime. All right. Okay. Ah, here we go. So, therefore, Dawyad, bless the Lord Yahuwah, all the assembly. And Dawyad said, Blessed are you, the Lord Yahuwah, the Almighty of Israel. Our Father forever, yours, or O Master, is the greatness, the power, and the glory, the victory, and the majesty, for all that is in heaven and in earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, or Master, as it says, and you are exalted as head for all. Both riches and honor come from you. And you reign over all. In your hand is power and might. In your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. Now therefore, our almighty, oh God, as it says here, good one, we thank you and praise your glorious name. But who am I? Who are my people that we should be able to offer so willingly as this? For all things come from you, and of your own we have given you. For we are aliens and pilgrims before you, as we were, as were all our fathers, our days on earth are as a shadow and without hope. So notice how 
Thou Yad, the love and the honor and praise that he's given our Heavenly Father, right? And how he's mentioning his characteristics, right? Yes, sir. And the things that he's able to do, correct? Yes, sir, correct. Okay, do you have anything to add? Well, no, sir. Okay. I'm learning. All right. O oh, Lord, our God, as it says here, or Adonai, um, or Abba, our Almighty, all this abundance that we have prepared to build you a house for your holy name is from your hand and is all your own. So they're going to build something, but they're saying it's from his hand for his honor and his glory, right? I know, verse 17, I know also, my almighty, that you test the heart and have pleasure in uprightness. As for me, in the uprightness of my heart, I have willingly offered all these things, and now with joy I have seen your people, who are present here to offer willingly to you. O oh, Almighty Yahuwah of Abraham, Yatsuk, and Yashra'al, our fathers, Keep this forever in the intent of the thoughts of the heart of your people and fix their heart toward you and give my son Shalama or Solomon a loyal heart to keep your commandments and your testimonies and your statutes to do all these things and to build the temple for which I have made provision. Then Da'uyad said to all the assembly, now bless the Lord Yahuwah, your almighty. So all the assembly blessed the Lord Yahuwah, the almighty of their fathers, and bowed their heads and prostrated themselves before the Lord Yahuwah and the king. Hey, uh, Father King, wait a minute. Hmm. Now, people have a problem. Thank you, Father King. Some of you probably still reading. You need to, we all need to stop now. Let's, let's talk about it. Because Father King let's, gives permission. So, people have a problem with Master Yahushua, who was the true king of Israel. He's anointed. He's the anointed one. He's the king. People have a problem saying that we only bow down to Abba Yahuwah. But we see here in the Tanakh, after our ancestor is praying, Dawiyah, right? We see the people bowing down, bowing down low to Master Yahuwah and, and, and what, I think? And the king, David. And the king. Mm -hmm. They now, bowed down. And, and, and our father, did our father have a problem? Did he, did, did Abba in his greatness, he know who he is. Thank you, Abba. In his greatness, did he strike down our ancestors for bowing down to him as well as the king? No. Was that because, considered yeah. idol worship to our heavenly father? No, because David was a chosen king by our heavenly father who had his anointing right? Our Heavenly Father's anointing, and yes, he sir. was representing our Heavenly Father. And now, this is during a time where Shalomah, or Solomon, is beginning to be, Solomon is going to become king of Israel after David. Okay, so now, okay, uh, can you, you please? Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Okay, please. Okay, sure. And they made sacrifices to the Lord Yahuwah and offered burnt offerings to the Lord Yahuwah on the next day, a thousand bulls, a thousand rams, a thousand lambs with their drink offerings, the thousands of all the thousands, it seems like, and sacrifices in abundance for all Yashrael. So they ate and drank before the Lord Yahuwah with great gladness on that day. And they made Shalomah, the son of Dawiyad, king the second time and anointed him before the Lord Yahuwah 
to be the leader and Zadok to be priest. Then Shalomah sat on the throne <laughs> of the Lord Yahuwah, king instead of David, his father, and prospered, and all Israel obeyed him. Well, hold on. I, wait, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I got you. Please. I I'm thought it was funny too. Wait a minute. Now, no one, now Abba is the most high. But it says here, now Abba is in the heavens. We know that Shalomai, everyone here in the proper context, they're on the earth. They're not on the, no other planet. They're on the earth. But yet the throne that Shalomai sat on represented the throne of Master Yahoo. You see this, my family? Okay, all, all right, okay. I just wanted to just have us to, go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, so just slow that, right. So all the leaders and the mighty men, also all the sons of David, okay, uh, submitted themselves to King Shalom. So the Lord who exalted Shalom ex exceedingly in the sight of all Israel, and bestowed on him such royal majesty as had not been on any king before him in Israel. So let me get this straight. Wait He's an anointed king, right? Yes, sir. Of okay, Yahuwah, got... right? Uh -huh. Yes, sir. And it says the Lord Yahuwah exalted Shalomah, okay? Yes, sir. Exceedingly in the sight of all Israel on his throne meaning the Lord Yahuwah's throne, right? And bestowed on him such royal majesty as had not been on any king before him in Israel. That's powerful. So uh, have a great day. Uh, we digress uh, because there's, what's powerful about that is that notice how just like I heavenly father stated that he was exalting Nasty Yehushua. Yes, sir. He still did the same exact thing for Shalomah. Yes, sir. On now his wait, throne. Mm -hmm. Now, wait a minute. Now, family, if we were all in this time, as a father king, let us just think and explore the lovely scriptures. If we all was in that time, and if, if there were people, not adding to the scriptures, just get, as a father king, let us think. If you was a part of Israel, in this particular time, you were going to bow down to Abba Yahuwah as well as the king. If you were to sit there and say, we're not bowing down to Shalomah, it would be a problem. Abba would have a problem with that. And notice how it talks about Shalomah being made king the second time. That's interesting, isn't it? Because remember his brother Adonijah, who exalted himself, was king who became king, but he wasn't really truly the king of Israel. No. And what happened to our ancestor Adonijah? He died. So he now, oh wait, Aki, I'm sorry. No, I said he did. He's 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 long gone. So now the question again: Did a true anointed king of Israel sit on the throne of Yahuwah in the Tanakh? The answer is yes. Mm -hmm. So why do people have a problem with Master Yahushua? But as I find our King lead, haters. I, what is it about? <laughs> I said haters. <laughs> exactly. Haters, all caps. So now, thank you, Father King. Let's go. Since we've seen that in the Tanakh, no rabbi, no Torah scholar is going to deny. Not if, not if they're a true Torah scholar or true believer. Not, they're not going to deny that there was a true anointed king who sat on the throne of Master Yahu. Okay, so now let's go to some final words from our Master Yahushua. Let's go to Revelation, the third chapter. And I'll be reading my family from Revelation chapter three. Thank you so much, Father King. Who you are, precious Holy Spirit. Revelation chapter three, and let's Let's examine what our master said. Now, Yehuqanan, our ancestor, wrote the, wrote the gospel, 
this is a particular revelation. The same one who wrote the gospel of John, the gospel according to John, Yehuchanan, he wrote this. So now, my family, this is around still the close of the, towards the close of the, the first century. So this is the verse 14. Verse 14, the message to Laodicea. So Revelation chapter three, starting verse 14. And it reads, and to the angel or messenger of the church or assembly of La Laodicea, write, the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of the almighty says this, I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I would that you were cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing. And you do not know that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire that you may become rich and white garments that you may clothe yourself and that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. And I solve to anoint your eyes that you may see. Those whom I love, I reprove and discipline. Be zealous therefore and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and will dine with him and he with me. Listen, my family, listen to what he says here. Remember what we, the question that was in, that we just read up regarding to the Tanakh. Look what our king says. He who overcomes, I will grant to him to sit down with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches of the sinners. So what is that show? What is our master's teaching? This was taught to what? The assemblies. Notice how Master Yahushua declares that he, he recognized there was an issue with the people, the, the particular believers in Laodicea. They were, they were, they were some of them, they were lukewarm. They wasn't cold or hot. So notice what he said, he, how he would deal with it. And they had this particular blindness that was upon them. They had this zeal. And he's telling them to repent with that same, dip, same mm -hmm. zeal, that same passion that they were in the wrong. He's telling them to repent. And notice how he says that he, the lovely promise, he says that those of us who overcome, we'll be able to sit with him in his throne. And notice how he said that he is, he says, even as I overcame and sat down with my father in his throne. Just like That's Solomon and David sat on our heavenly father's throne, right? Powerful. I mean, what do you have a, what's your thoughts on that, brother? I mean, it, it just, I'll say this, because the text says for itself, we've learned so many different things, right? We've seen the interpretations, right? And the arguments of uh, what Psalms 110 says, right? We've gone into the New Testament to see what the gospel narratives state as far as the uh, testimony of Yahushua and how he questioned the Pharisees, right, about Psalms 110, right? Hey, tell me about David, right, and what he meant by that. Then we also went into, you know, seeing what Paul said and then, or Shaul and Kapha, right, and their testimony as far as referencing and quoting psalms 110 okay yes. then we went into the historicity with eusebius and justin martyr all right and also a different argument when it came to what the interpretation of psalms 110 was when it came to hezekiah right mm -hmm. then we also went to see um from the tanakh how there was a throne of the almighty but all glory and honor and esteem was given to our Heavenly Father, right? Yep. Just like our King, our Master Yahushua did the same thing and the Apostles' doctrine was the same way. And then now here, from our King's words, I know your works that you were neither cold nor hot and how you said, because 
that goes to show that when you're not careful and firm in your faith and in your belief, if you're just going to jump back and forth, I believe in the Messiah, I don't believe in the Messiah, you know, I believe in the resurrection, I don't believe in the resurrection, like, which one is it? At some point, us students, and if we want to consider ourselves leaders and get on a screen or and, and minister to people and be teachers, we have to be firm and stand strong because if we speak to the body, okay, to, uh, to all the people out there scattered, and we are flip-flopping on our belief, how will, what will that do to others and their faith and belief in our Heavenly Father? If we are sit here and proclaiming, I have the Holy Spirit, I have the Ruach, I'm led by the Ruach, right? We're led by the Holy Spirit, but yet we're jumping in beliefs. So now, what does that do for the body? It tells them, but what's going on? Did they have the Ruach of confusion? Which Ruach did they have? Right? So yes, here, it's saying, pick one. I'd rather you either be cold or hot, but be one thing. Be one way. You can't have both. You can't flip-flop back and forth and up and down, sideways, crisscross, applesauce. None of that. At some point, we have to be able to choose. And what we choose and represent has to be, if it's from our Heavenly Father and our King, right? If it's yes. from the Ruach, it won't be any confusion and it won't allow us to flip-flop and change our minds and our beliefs. We will stand strong in our beliefs and we'll be able to fight against any heresies, any heretics, any lies that the enemy, the devil, or Hashatan, however you want to say it, will put against. And notice yes. how, again, Yahushua still gave honor to our Heavenly Father and mentioned that it was his throne. And he said to us, if we overcome, we will also get an opportunity to sit on his throne. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Ruach is saying to the assembly. That's powerful right there. That is powerful. Because notice how it says what the Ruach says. That's the true spirit, the true Ruach. And just because we sit on our master's throne, does that mean that we are Master Yahushua? No. That's not what Master Yahushua is saying. So why would people think that Master Yahushua is trying to be, that he's his father? But again, it just shows the inconsistencies with the wicked spirits. But yes, sir. It, it, this is powerful. And I just, as a Father King lead family, as I say, uh, the final words that Father King uh, give me permission to say, and then Akiai will say his final words as he's led. I just want to say, brothers that and sisters, that... Um, you know, we love you. We had a wonderful time. Give a thanks to the one true almighty Abba Yahuwah, who is precious son, his eternal son, not created son, his eternal son, Master Yahushua, through that precious set apart spirit. And I just want all of you to continue to grow, continue to learn, stay in the faith. Don't be knocked off the square. Um, continue to be able to just walk every day in truth. If there's things in the scriptures that you all have challenges with, I'm going to point you to the primary source, Abba Yahuwah. You see this? We're so quick to want to go. That doesn't mean that we fought. That doesn't mean that we don't follow a man, but make sure that man is anointed man. He's not a flip-flopping man. But your primary source, you need to go to our father and our king through their precious spirit. Sometimes when people have questions, they bypass our father and our king through their precious spirit, and they go to men asking questions. You see this? We're pointing you, my brother and I, as we're led, we're pointing you to the true rabbi, the true rabbi Yai, who has the true interpretation of Abba's Torah. And that's Master Yahushua of Nazareth. Yai, thank you, Father. Uh, thank you, my Father, my King. I, it was wonderfully said. Um, I hope we just all continue to grow and learn and be edified and continue to just stand firm in our faith and in our belief. So no matter what obstacles come our way, whatever the enemy throws at us, um, I know sometimes it can be a little overwhelming, right? Um, with the different uh, doctrinal beliefs and the different sectarianism, and you have all these different groups 
paired up together and you kind of feel like, man, maybe I'm by myself. But guess what? Just like in Exodus when, um, please grab my father, my king. Uh, just like in Exodus, um, when the people were rebelling against our heavenly father and they were, uh, Masha was led to say, it's like, hey, those of you who are of Yahuwah, right? With Yahuwah, come on one side. And those of you who are not, go on the other side. So there was still separation right? and contentions with believing our Heavenly Father, even during that time. So when Master Yahushua came, when it said father against uh, mother or brother, yeah, however, you know, and I'm paraphrasing here. He wasn't saying, you're going to have to fight them for me. What he was saying is that your faith and your belief in me will cause those contentions. And you have to be ready for that. Because the same contentions that were going on for the children of Israel with following our Heavenly Father, right, and the commitments, the same exact thing was happening with Master Yahushua, right, and his disciples, and, and the anointed faith for the first, second, uh, second century, and, and so on. So, and it's still happening to this day, right? Where, look at all the contentions, Akiai, right? Where you have certain rabbis and certain individuals and they're, and they're uh, nice little circles and, and getting boastful about, you know, proclaiming that it's only about Yahuwah, there's no master Yahushua. Look at, at all the contentions and the separation that's causing. So it's interesting that it's mentioned in the scriptures, right? In the gospel narrative, we could see it in the Tanakh, in the Torah, right? As far as the separation and the beliefs and the families. And even to this day, it's happening now with all the separation of like, nah, that's Master Yahushua. His name's Yahawashah. Nah, his name's Yeshua, you know, right? Oh, you know, his name's Yahuwah. No, his name's Hashem, you know? <laughs> All this sectarianism, look at the separation that's being caused. That's, that's not the true the Messiah. We're waiting for the real Messiah. No, the Messiah is already here. That separation is already there. It was already mentioned in the gospel narratives. It was already, all the apostles were talking about it. And it's happening to this day. So it's, it, Father my King, please allow me to get frustrated. It blows my mind how we can sit here and try to negate the New Testament, but things that were written in the New Testament happened and are still happening to this day. So, all right, let's say we use the argument that it didn't happen, right? Gospel narrative is false, right? We still know that it was written thousands of years ago, right? That's number one. And number two, we can still tie it to what's going on today. It's actually happening. So maybe it was prophetic. Who knows, right? If you want to use your logic and things of that sort. But we have to stand strong in our faith and we have to pick a side, okay? Choose this day who you will all serve. The same question was given to our ancestors thousands and thousands of years ago. And the same questions are given to us each day. I have to ask myself that same question. Who do I want to serve? I choose to serve Master Yahushua, the Messiah of Nazareth, through our Heavenly Father, Yahuwah, the Almighty, with their precious uh, set-apart spirit. Because that's the only way, not thinking i don't care about no other rabbi right so only message is um stand strong stand strong and continue to study to show yourself approved look at all the facts but look at it in an open mind and not just with like oh they're saying the messiah is not real now i gotta see where is he not real at no they're saying he's not real okay now go into your old testament Ask our Heavenly Father to provide you with the true set apart Ruach and allow him to reveal to you how the Messiah, Master Yahushua, who was born of the virgin birth through the Holy Spirit, is in there. With that being said, 
I digress and name my heavenly father, the almighty, Father Yahuwah, and our king, uh, my rabbi, Yai, my rabbi, the true rabbi, Master Yahushua, yours too. Brother, Maranatha. Maranatha. Amen. Amen.